Barotrauma Barotrauma means injury to your body due to change in air or water pressure. Baro, relating to pressure. Diving as a profession can be traced back more than 5,000 years, yet diving-related disease was not described until 1878. Symptoms of case and disease were noted among bridge workers after finishing their shifts underwater and coming back to the surface. These symptoms included dizzy spells, difficulty breathing, and sharp pain in the joints or abdomen. The workers would often have severe back pain that left them bent over, which is how case and disease earned the nickname the bends. Diving barotrauma can present with various manifestations, from ear, face or mouth pain and headaches to major joint pain, paralysis, coma, and death. The three major manifestations of barotrauma include, 1, sinus or middle ear effects, 2, decompression sickness, DCS, and, 3, arterial gas assembly, blood clot. There have also been minor sequelae to include isolated nerve involvement and facial baroparesis, paresis, muscular weakness. Most commonly, the sinuses and middle ear are affected, and this can occur from relatively shallow dives, from deep dives, and in divers training. Barotrauma has also reportedly been caused by an airbag rupturing during deployment, forcing high-pressure gas into a person's lungs. It has also reportedly been associated with rapid ascent in military aircraft and with pressure changes associated with space exploration. Barotrauma has also been reported with both tracheal intubation and fiber optic endotracheal intubation tube insertion. Fiber optic endotracheal intubation requires insufflated oxygen, which increases airway pressure. This leads to alveolar rupture with pneumothorax and subcutaneous emphysema, lung air sac damage. The most current research in barotrauma has been dealing with ventilator-associated barotrauma and barotrauma prevention. Airplane ear, ear barotrauma, is the stress on your eardrum that occurs when the air pressure in your middle ear and the air pressure in the environment are out of balance. You might get airplane ear when on an airplane that's climbing after takeoff or descending for landing. Airplane ear is also called ear barotrauma, barotitis media or aerotitis media. Ear barotrauma, also known as airplane ear, is that clogged up, sometimes painful feeling you get in your ears when the air pressure changes quickly. It's the biggest health problem for people who fly. And it can be especially painful for babies and young kids because their ears aren't fully developed. Ear barotrauma also can happen when you ride in an elevator or drive in the mountains, hiking, in hyperbaric oxygen chambers, during explosions nearby, such as in a war zone. It can happen in the water, too. Scuba divers call it ear squeeze. As a diver goes deeper underwater, the pressure in the middle ear, the part behind the eardrum, is squeezed by the increasing pressure of the water from outside. The middle ear is an air-filled space formed by bone in the eardrum. It is connected to the back of the nose by a tunnel called the eustachian tube. Outside air passing through the eustachian tube keeps the pressure in the middle ear equal to that of the outside world. If the eustachian tube malfunctions and there's a pressure difference across the eardrum, pain or ear squeeze happens. Ear Barotrauma Ear Barotrauma refers to ear pain caused by a change in pressure around the ear. It can cause discomfort or pain as well as difficulty hearing. Ear Barotrauma usually clears up by itself but some people may need to talk to a doctor, and in very severe cases, have corrective surgery. Ear barotrauma can be acute or chronic. Scuba diving can often cause ear barotrauma, and it is also common during an airplane takeoff or landing. Certain infections and blockages can cause ear barotrauma too. The condition can be acute or chronic. Acute cases are common and generally harmless. However, a person with chronic ear barotrauma will experience prolonged symptoms, which may lead to further complications. Ear barotrauma symptoms. If you have ear barotrauma, you may feel an uncomfortable pressure inside the ear. Common symptoms, which occur in mild to moderate cases, may include dizziness, general ear discomfort, slight hearing loss or difficulty hearing, stuffiness or fullness in the ear. If it progresses long enough without treatment or the case is particularly severe, additional symptoms may occur. Ear pain, feeling of pressure in the ears, as if you were underwater. Nosebleed, moderate to severe hearing loss or difficulty, eardrum injury. 
Once treated, almost all symptoms will go away. Hearing loss from ear barotrauma is almost always temporary and reversible. Causes of ear barotrauma Eustachian tube blockage is one of the causes of ear barotrauma. The eustachian tube helps to restore equilibrium during changes in pressure. For example, yawning normally opens the eustachian tube. When the tube is blocked, symptoms develop because the pressure in the ear is different than the pressure outside of your eardrum. How long does it last? Mild cases of ear barotrauma cause symptoms that typically only last for a few minutes before clearing on their own. In severe cases, a person may need treatment to resolve an underlying cause. The recovery time will depend on the severity of the underlying cause. Ear barotrauma can sometimes lead to a ruptured eardrum, also called tympanic membrane perforation. If this happens, it may take several months for the ear to heal completely. A ruptured eardrum often heals spontaneously, but, if this is not the case, it is possible to repair the eardrum with surgery. Diagnosis How do doctors diagnose ear barotrauma? Your doctor will start by checking your ears with an otoscope. This is a special lighted instrument that providers use to look inside your ear to see if your eardrum is damaged or you have an ear infection. They may also do a hearing test. Management and treatment, how do doctors treat ear barotrauma? Your doctor may recommend you take an over-the-counter decongestant. They may prescribe steroids to ease your symptoms. If your eardrum ruptured, causing you to lose some of your hearing, they may do surgery. Risk factors Any condition that blocks the eustachian tube or limits its function can increase the risk of airplane ear. They include A small eustachian tube, especially in infants and toddlers. The common cold, sinus infection, hay fever, allergic rhinitis, middle ear infection, otitis media. Sleeping on an airplane during ascent and descent because you aren't actively doing things to equalize pressure in your ears such as yawning or swallowing. Complications the Airplane ear usually isn't serious and responds to self-care. Long-term complications can rarely occur when a condition is serious or prolonged or if there's damage to middle or inner ear structures. Rare complications may include, permanent hearing loss and ongoing, chronic, tinnitus. Treatment, chewing gum may help to relieve the symptoms of ear barotrauma. Most cases of ear barotrauma will resolve after a short period without the need for medical intervention. However, it should be possible to relieve the symptoms of mild ear barotrauma by using certain techniques to help open the eustachian tube. This allows air to enter or leave the middle ear to equalize the pressure. These techniques include Chewing gum, sucking on a lozenge, swallowing, or yawning. Using the mouth helps to open up the eustachian tube. Taking an over-the-counter, OTC, nasal decongestant, antihistamine, or both. If a person has upper respiratory congestion or an allergy, this may help the eustachian tube to stay open. Stopping a diving descent at the first sign of ear discomfort to allow time for equalizing. People should avoid putting drops in the ear. It is essential to keep the ear clean and away from contamination to prevent any infection while it is healing. If an infection is present, a doctor may prescribe antibiotic therapy. In cases of chronic or severe ear barotrauma, a doctor may decide that surgery is necessary. Using a particular surgical procedure, it is possible to implant small cylinders called ear tubes into the ear. These can relieve middle ear problems. The use of ear tube placement surgery is common in children who have hearing loss due to recurrent infections or ongoing fluid collection in the middle ear. However, surgeons rarely use this procedure to treat ear barotrauma. In severe or chronic cases of barotrauma, surgery may be the best option for treatment. Chronic cases of ear barotrauma may be aided with the help of ear tubes. These small cylinders are placed through the eardrum to stimulate airflow into the middle of the ear. Ear tubes, also known as tympanostomy tubes or grommets, are most commonly used in children and they can help prevent infections from ear barotrauma. These are also commonly used in those with chronic barotrauma who frequently change altitudes, like those who need to fly or travel often. The ear tube will typically remain in place for 6 to 12 months. 
The second surgical option involves a tiny slit being made into the eardrum to better allow pressure to equalize. This can also remove any fluid that's present in the middle ear. The slit will heal quickly, and may not be a permanent solution. Ear Barrow Trauma in Infants Infants and young children are particularly susceptible to ear barrow trauma. This is because their eustachian tubes are much smaller and straighter and therefore struggle more with equalization. If your infant is demonstrating signs of discomfort, distress, agitation, or pain while experiencing a change in altitude, it's likely they're experiencing ear barrow trauma. To help prevent ear barrow trauma in infants, you can feed them or have them drink during altitude changes. For children with ear discomfort, your doctor may be able to prescribe ear drops to help relieve pain. Potential complications Ear barrow trauma is usually temporary. However, complications may arise in some people, especially in chronic cases. If left untreated, this condition may cause Ear infections, ruptured eardrum, hearing loss, recurring pain, chronic dizziness and feelings of unbalance, vertigo, bleeding from the ears and nose. You should contact your doctor if you have ear pain or decreased hearing. Persistent and recurring symptoms could be a sign of severe or chronic ear barrow trauma. Your doctor will treat you and give you tips to help prevent any complications. There is a range of severities and specific types of ear barrow trauma that affect how someone recovers and what that recovery process looks like. The majority of those who experience ear barrow trauma will make a full recovery, with no permanent hearing loss. While recovering, patients should avoid significant pressure changes, like those experienced while diving or on an airplane. Many cases of barrow trauma will resolve spontaneously and without any treatment. If barrow trauma is caused by allergies or respiratory infections, it will often be resolved when the underlying cause has been resolved. Full recovery Mild to moderate cases take an average of up to two weeks for a full recovery. Severe cases can take 6 to 12 months for a full recovery after surgery. When barrow trauma leads to an infection or if the pain is intense and symptoms are worsening, you should consult your doctor. Ear Barrow Trauma Prevention You can prevent ear barrow trauma by keeping your eustachian tubes open. Ways to do that include 1. Medicine If you have a cold or allergies, take a decongestant about an hour before you fly. Decongestants taken by mouth might help if taken 30 minutes to an hour before an airplane flight. However, if you have heart disease, a heart rhythm disorder or high blood pressure or you're pregnant, avoid taking an oral decongestant. 2. If you have nasal congestion, use a nasal spray about 30 minutes to an hour before takeoff and landing. Avoid overuse, however, because nasal sprays taken over 3 to 4 days can increase congestion. Use decongestant pills cautiously. 3. Take allergy medication. If you have allergies, take your medication about an hour before your flight. 4. Earplugs. Special plugs designed for air travel can slow pressure changes and give your ears time to adjust. 5. If you're a diver, try these things to protect your ears, equalize your ears before your dive and while going down into the water. 6. Go down feet first, it can make equalizing easier. 7. Look up, extending your neck can open your tubes. 8. Get back to the surface slowly if you feel pain. Continuing your dive can injure your ears. 9. Don't dive if you have any sinus or upper respiratory symptoms. Follow these tips to avoid airplane ear, yawn and swallow during ascent and descent. These activate the muscles that open your eustachian tubes. 10. You can suck on candy or chew gum to help you swallow. 11. Use the Volsalva maneuver during ascent and descent. Gently blow, as if blowing your nose, while pinching your nostrils and keeping your mouth closed. Repeat several times, especially during descent, to equalize the pressure between your ears and the airplane cabin. 12. If you're awake during ascents and descents, you can do the necessary self-care techniques when you feel pressure in your ears. 13. Reconsider travel plans. If possible, don't fly when you have a cold, a sinus infection, nasal congestion or an ear infection. 14. If you've recently had ear surgery, talk to your doctor about when it's safe to travel. 15. However, you'll still need to yawn and swallow to relieve pressure. 16. 
If you're prone to severe airplane ear and must fly often your doctor might surgically place tubes in your eardrums to aid fluid drainage. 17. Ventilate your middle ear, and equalize the pressure between your outer ear and middle ear. 18. Helping children prevent airplane ear, give a baby or toddler a bottle to suck on during ascents and descents to encourage frequent swallowing. 19. A pacifier also might help. Have the child sit up while drinking. 20. Children older than 4 can try chewing gum, drinking through a straw or blowing bubbles through a straw. Avoid decongestants. Decongestants aren't recommended for young children.